If there's one confusing thing about Back to the Future, it would have to be the time travel. It is so complex and cool, but we never really get an explanation in the films to how it works all together. And when you actually sit down and think about how Marty has stuffed up the past and the future and created multiple timelines, it's enough to give you a headache. So today I'm going to give my thoughts on how time travel could work in the movies Back to the Future. Now, in the first Back to the Future, Doc says that the flux capacitor is what makes time travel possible and needs 1.21 gigawatts of electricity to be able to travel through time. And the car has a very small nuclear reactor and if the car is travelling at 88 miles an hour, it's able to go through time. But it doesn't really give us a clear explanation of how it can actually go to another dimension. But you're probably thinking, come on, Back to the Future is just a science fiction movie, so of course there isn't going to be a logical explanation. But here's the thing, there is a little hint of how the car could travel through time, and it's in the movies. When Einstein the dog is in the DeLorean for the first test drive, Marty and Doc are standing on the middle of the road, and are watching the car coming straight towards them, and there are lots of flashing lights and it disappears, only leaving a trail of fire on the road. But let's look at that scene carefully. If you look at the flux capacitor in the corner of the car, it's beginning to light up and activate. And when the car is coming straight towards them, there's a bunch of flashing lights. And then for a little millisecond, you can see what appears to be a small portal that the car drives through. It's hard to see with all the big flashing lights, but it's there. And with the fire trail, that's where the car would be in another dimension. So when the flux capacitor is activated, it shoots out a portal, causing the car to drive through it to another dimension. And with the car travelling at 88 miles an hour, with all of that electricity and power, it's able to go through time, because a nuclear or electricity is so powerful that it must be able to travel through to another dimension. And yes, I know that this might seem a bit confusing to get your head around, but that's just the basics of how it might work in the Back to the Future movies. It doesn't mean it could work in our world. So now let's have a look at the Back to the Future timeline, movie to movie. Now in the first Back to the Future movie, it's pretty simple. Marty travels to 1955 from 1985. This would take place on the same timeline, just going back 30 years. Now we know that Marty does change the past in many ways. In fact, too many ways. Which, he's actually made a completely new timeline. A timeline where he actually lives in a successful family. But when Marty gets back to 1985, we actually see the events of Back to the Future take place. And we see Marty, from the start of the movie, jump into the DeLorean to travel to the past, just from another angle. So this Marty that we see would have grown up in an alternate 1985 with loving and supporting parents. So Marty, the one that we've been following the film with, is now going to be growing up in this alternate family that he doesn't even know. And the Marty that has been growing up in that family is now gone to a completely new timeline. Didn't they say this was going to be simple? Well, maybe it's not. So Doc comes back at the end of the film to tell Marty that they have to do something about his kids and travel to the year 2015, leading us into Back to the Future Part 2. Now, at the start of the movie, they travel to 2015, where Marty buys a sports almanac so he can predict a few races in the future. Well, the past. You know what I mean. Biff steals it and gives it to himself in 1955, when Marty and Doc then travel to an alternate 1985, where Doc actually does explain this in the movie. Now, Biff does, has mucked up the timeline and has made this alternate reality, so Marty and Doc have to travel to 1955 again to get the almanac off Biff before he can bet on it. Now, this 1955 they travel to would be on this new timeline, with the alternate 1985's on, but just not on the original, but still the same events would be taking place. Now, Marty and Doc have to make sure they don't run into themselves. After that, they burn the almanac and Doc gets struck by lightning and ends up in the year 1885. And that leads us into Back to the Future Part 3. Now, in Back to the Future Part 3, Marty travels to 1885 on the same timeline he is at the moment, 
and he causes a few changes, and when he goes back to 1985, he has changed things again, and that brings us to the end of the trilogy. So after looking at all of the movies, every time Marty goes back in time, he's always going to change things. Some are big changes, and some are small changes. Like if Marty went back to, I don't know, the Jurassic period, there'd be many more changes in humanity than just some little ones in his family and the people around him. So in the first Back to the Future where Marty left 1985 and returned to a new alternate 1985 with loving and supporting parents, does that mean that Marty is now missing from his old timeline? So that must mean that Marty and Doc are actually missing from a couple of timelines because we know that Doc does travel to the past and disappears from the future. And wouldn't Doc just know he gets stuck in 1885 because Marty does see Doc in 1955 at the end of Back to the Future Part 2, meaning Doc would know what happens to himself. Or maybe Doc is just playing along, because we know that Doc gets shot in 1885 and Marty saves him, meaning those events never happen. Okay, so put it this way. Every time Marty and Doc go to the future or the past, they're always creating these new timelines with all of these different events, and always creating a paradox. So, for example, the reality that Marty grew up in, he's now gone. He doesn't live in that reality. He's missing from that timeline, and Doc in that timeline would have been dead. Marty is now living in his new alternate timeline with Doc and his new, more successful family. So whatever happens, every time Marty and Doc go to the past and then come back, they're always going to be in a new timeline because they're always going to accidentally change things. And then all of those timelines that they have created would then disappear from existence. It's kind of crazy when you think about how Marty and Doc are always destroying all of these timelines and all of these people's lives. It's almost a bit dark, but thankfully at the end of Back to the Future Part 3, they destroyed the time machine, so there's no hope of travelling back in time in the future. Wait. Oh no. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was confusing, but that's probably the best explanation to how Back to the Future timelines and time travel could work. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a big thumbs up and I'll see you next Friday.